Let's read together from Luke chapter 6. You don't get wormy apples of a healthy tree, nor good apples of a diseased tree. The health of the apple tells the health of the tree. You must begin with your own life-giving lives. It's who you are, not what you say and do that counts. Your true being brims over into true words and deeds. Why are you so polite with me, always saying, yes, sir, and that's right, sir, but never doing a thing I tell you to? These words I speak to you are not mere additions to your life. Homeowner improvements to your standard of living, they are foundation words, words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you're like a smart carpenter who dug deep and laid the foundation of his house on the bedrock. When the river bursts its banks, it crushed against the house. Nothing could shake it. It was built to last. But if you just use my words and Bible studies and you don't work them into your life, you're like a dumb carpenter who built a house but skipped the foundation. When the swollen river came crashing in, it collapsed like a house of cards. It was a total loss. Friends, today, <clears throat> it's not going to be a normal sermon or a teaching. I just want to speak to you today about the life that we have together, our community. And there's three invitations I'd like to extend to you. The first one has to do with where we are now. So where are we? Well, psychologically, uh, we've just come through COVID, a pandemic, and all of us, have to deal with loss. We've lost friends, family members, economically, dreams are scattered. I can go on. You know, it just came to your mind, the losses that you had to deal with. A problem is that a lot of us are denying loss. What are you doing with your loss? To deny it is to swallow it. To just go on, just to stay positive. It's not a way. Your body would keep score. That's why a lot of people are talking about the second pandemic that we find ourselves in. Mental health because of what happened to us. Where are we physically? Well, we're in a country, I would say, where we are challenged politically. Economically, I've seen a lady yesterday and she burst out of tears and I burst into tears and I asked her, what's wrong? What happened to you? And she said, load shedding. I knew at that, at that moment, it wasn't just about load shedding, but it, it's, it's just the accumulation. It was just the last straw that, that broke the camel's back of everything that we had to, have to deal with all the time. And the predictions for this year economically is worse than last year. And we're into moving in towards an election, and that might be one of the first big tests after the new South Africa of our democracy that lies ahead for us. All these circumstances has a huge effect on our stress levels, um, our environment is not friendly. How do you deal with it? What do you do with it? Of course, it can steal your health. It takes away your wholeness. The church has been affected by it deeply. Well, financially, we had to um, d redo our whole budget. And... Um, uh, a sad thing is that a lot of people disconnected with the community in the past few years. To give you an indication what happened on staff, not on the, only on our staff, in church as whole, 49% of staff members, people working at church, felt that they would like to quit and find something else in another place. Gives you an idea of the environment that we're living in. So where's God in all of this? 
in the passage that we've read, Jesus spoke to a crowd of people. They were in very challenging circumstances themselves. And here's what Jesus said. You're like a tree. I use that metaphor quite a few times. And he said, um, I want you to bear fruit. Now that's very interesting. A fruit, a tree. And Jesus said, um, here's what I suggest you do. Begin with your own life-giving lives. It's interesting what he, he doesn't focus on. He doesn't focus on the political, all the challenges that they have that were real. He said, focus on your inner life. So that you can, have, so that you can be, be healthy, so that you can bear fruit, so you can be a light in darkness. You know, there are some things that we don't have any control over in life. And I found myself sometimes gravitating to those things, getting upset with it, feeling powerless. And of course, it's, it's what will happen to you if you focus on that. Focus on the things that you have control over. That's what Jesus is saying. Your own inner life. Your private life will determine your public life. That's what Jesus is challenging those people. And I think it's the same challenge that comes our way. And then he says, fruit, bear fruit. Now, what, what is fruit about? Fruit is uh, a, a, a tree bears fruit, not for himself. It's to reproduce and it's to give to other people. That's why the fruit are there. So you can be very successful, but not necessarily fruitful. And that's the invitation of Jesus, to become fruitful. And he tells us how to become fruitful. Not by, build, by being successful in a big outer life, but by becoming healthy, focusing on your inner life. He says, the health of the apple tells the health of the tree. Now, here's something very puzzling. It sounds as if Jesus say, say that we are responsible for our health. Now, here's a big thing about the Bible. Every commandment that God gives, it's not possible to do it out of your own strength and just by sheer willpower. You need God. Take, for instance, love. Can you really love? But do you have the power, the strength to be compassionate towards your enemy? Can you forgive him? Or uh, can you bless? I found I can't, I can't do that. Not without the help of God. And it's the same with our health. We are challenged, some of us, with sickness. Others, with wholeness. There's a difference. And, and we see it in the way that Jesus healed people in his ministry of healing. Um, <clears throat> Mark chapter 5, there's a woman who's sick, comes to Jesus and she thought, if I could only touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. And she did it. And power went through her. And she felt in her body that she was healed. Now the word for healed is eathai in Greek. And just for a moment, just to keep that word in mind. After that happened to her, she touched Jesus, but she wasn't in touch with Jesus. She came in touch with Jesus through a conversation. She connected with him and she shared a whole story with him. And what happened to her, at that moment, she was made whole. Um, the Bible says, thy faith has made thee whole. And the word for whole there is so-so. It's also translated healed or saved sometimes, but it's a different word. Yathai and zoto. So healing has to do with wholeness. You can be healed physically, but not made whole. The ten lepers that came to Jesus, he healed all ten of them. Only one came back to him and said, thank you. 
Jesus said, where's the others? And Jesus said, to this one, you are made whole. You are so toad. Um, and that's, uh, that's important to know. Uh, wholeness has to do with your, the whole of your life, your relationships. You know, you're uh, having a deep connection with your values, with the meaning of life, with meaningful work, with nature. Then you're whole. And sometimes our lack of wholeness, our brokenness, are the cause of our sickness. And um, medicine won't cure that. It's like um, drying up underneath a dripping tap. You know, it, 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 the sickness will keep on coming back unless you are made whole. So here's the invitation for this year. It's an opportunity a one-year journey, and we call it Zoto, to discover Jesus as the healer of your life. You might know him as the Savior. This experience will be online and in person. All the input you'll receive, the reading work, as well as the, uh, the stuff that you've got to listen to, the presentations, the teachings, and we'll get together four times during the year, to practice something together. You'll receive a practice by doing it so that you can integrate the stuff that you've learned. And all, this, all the information is available on the web. The next invitation has, has to do with our journey. I remember a decade ago when um, Trevor Hudson became a part-time teacher on staff. He was here for about a week and he came to me and he said, John, what's this journey everybody's talking about? And he, he caught me a bit off guard and I had to think about it and get words to describe it. And I said, well, I think it, 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 it has to do with following Jesus. It has to do to, with spending time with him so that we can learn from him, so that we can become like him. And we spend, you know, we follow him as a community as well. It has to do with this idea that the three big movements in Jesus' life was to go deeper, to move closer to other people, and to go further into the world with hope, with healing, with ministry. And that's what uh, Luke 6 is all about that we've just read. In the passage uh, that we've read, we heard his teaching. The passage just before that, we get to know him in the way that he lived. His life. And here's what it's all about. He prayed during the night. That is going deeper in his relationship with the Father. The next morning, he elected 12 disciples to share his life with. To share his life deeply with. That is going closer to other people. And then in the evening, he multiplied bread, he taught, and he healed people. That's going further with his life. Now, how do we do that practically? We've developed a funnel that um, is just a little picture to give you an image. And we developed that over the, over the years that it, it actually brings together our vision, our mission, our philosophy, our strategy in a very simple way. Here's our idea, practically to live this life, to receive the word. And that primarily happens when we get together, just as it happened there. A lot of people got together and they listened to Jesus and they heard the word and they received the word. Now listen to Jesus' teaching. The way that you, that the tree receives water and find sustenance is through the word. Christian spirituality centers around Jesus and the word, his life and his teaching, a life with him. Jesus said, work 
the words into your life. And that's what we want to do. You first receive the word. And then by yourself for that whole week, you work the words into your life. And the way that you do it is uh, we've got five Ps and we've got a three-hour interactive learning experience where you get familiar and also found some tools with every one of these five Ps. The first one is to find a place. And of course, to come with the right posture to that place. And then you've got to have a passage from the Bible that you sit with. You read it slowly. You take it in. And then you um, pray. Talk to God about it. Ask him to enlighten you. Be sensitive to what the movements that's happening inside of your, uh, your life. And then you ponder upon the word that you received. And then you just sit in peace, in silence, in contemplation with God. This idea, of course, it's a very old way that the first church prayed. And it's based upon that understanding. The old church father in the third century said, when you receive the word, it's like taking food and putting it in your mouth. When you ponder about it, you start chewing it. And then when you swallow it, it's, it's, it's when you pray about it. And then when it's digested, it's, it's, it's when you just sit with it. And that's where you receive your energy. And that's where the food becomes muscle. That's where the food becomes, the word becomes flesh in your life. That's the first important place to start with a life with God. And then the next step is to share the word with other people. And it's when you move into a mezzo situation, a smaller group of people getting together, that's moving closer to each other now. It's a f you just assimilate the word further if you listen to what happened to people who lived with this word and, how, and you share your story with them. And then to take another step is to go further with your life. To move outside. And that's when you start giving. By being a witness through service and giving a testimony to what God is doing in your life. And so it has to do with the three movements. It's physical. It's psychological. It's spiritual. The three movements that Jesus lived with. It's these three big commandments that we should love God, we should love each other, and we should go into the world. So the big question is, where are you in the journey? What is your next step that you want to focus on to grow in this journey? The last invitation has to do with invest. Now, invest is a, is a fund that we've created years ago just to fund ministry. And our two big focuses this coming year would be on, on the community itself and on the outside, things that we want to accomplish. Now, first of all, our life together, we actually have three big, we, it looks like congregations to us. It's the in-person in meetings that we have. A lot of people have lost contact. And we have a new leader that we've appointed. His name is Roland Jones. And he would preach next weekend and be introduced to the congregation and to everybody. And our big aim is to, to grow again and to establish the contact that we've lost with each other. The other focus is online. And we want to go further than just information, just downloading information online. We want to experiment and see what it'd be like if engagement can happen. So it, to take it further than just hearing something about it and getting connected to each other online and to minister online and in person. Of course, our dream and our think 
We should be a hybrid in the future. And then the other big thing is the ministry to our English-speaking members. It was a tough ball for us to keep in the air this past few years. We didn't know COVID was coming, so uh, we, was, we weren't prepared for it. And we wouldn't have started the English ministry if we knew it. But there's an old Chinese saying that says, once you've mounted the tiger, you cannot dismount. So we, we hang in there. And we are dreaming about a leader for our ministry to the English-speaking members, to you. And, um, but good news is we have one of our leaders, Tarin, who's going to spend a lot of her time for the English-speaking members of the congregation. So uh, we want to go further as well. We take hands. And there's two big things that I just want to mention. First of all is CakeNet. We've signed another year contract with them. And a lot of times, it's a lot of effort to, be, uh, to do it. But the only thing that keeps us going is hearing about the testimonies of what happened to people receiving. It's 60,000 people looking on a Sunday, our viewers, and 40,000 every day. And for a lot of people, it has become their church. The other thing we'd like to accomplish is to distribute 20,000 meals a day. A day. We, I, I couldn't imagine a decade or two ago that we would come to this place where we would be able to do something like this. So we would like you to take hands with us and do the work with us. So where are you today? Uh, you, uh, the opportunity is there to grow in wholeness. You can register. All the information is now available on our platforms. Your next step on the journey. Uh, the journey will never end in this life. You'll never be able to get everything under your, under your knee. You can always grow in your connection with God, with other people, and with your life and in your ministry. And one of, uh, perhaps the first step for some of us was just to make a commitment to receive the word and to work it in our lives every day. So just rock up for the meeting on a Sunday. And if you miss it on Sunday, it's available on any time that you'd like to, to access, to have it, to receive the word with a lot of other people and to share with it. The AA has got a saying, just turn up for the meeting. And I couldn't help to think about the first meeting that the 120 had believers where the Holy Spirit came upon them and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. I bet you that morning some of them said, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't know if that guy's going to be there again or whatever. But suddenly you'll be surprised with what happens at the meeting. The other invitation is to give. If you don't give anything, why don't you start giving on a regular basis, monthly? We call it tithing. And, and the big reason, there's a lot of reasons for it, but the big reason is to open up that heart in your door, that door in your heart, the financial, to invite God to become a partner with you, with your income, and how you manage your finances. What you sow, you will reap, and it can become a wonderful adventure. Um, our fund is invest, and you can just discuss it. As a family, think about it, pray about it. What's on your heart to give? Over and above, perhaps, if you give regularly for invest to help us take hands. If you benefit in any way from this ministry, please help us to continue doing what we are doing.
There's a ministry report available that would uh, give you some information of what happened in the past year and of what we're looking for more specifically, a lot of uh, goals that we have for the year ahead. And there's a year report for you who are interested in the big picture, what's our income, how many people that we reach, what's going on. It's all available. And the codes for giving us now available. If you have any questions, you can just contact us through an email and we would react to that. Let's pray together. Father, buy a donkey for this life that we can have together with you and with each other. Thank you for the work that you're doing in us And thank you for the work that you're doing amongst us. Thank you for coming to us through our brother and our sister and through the gifts that you've distributed in this community. Thank you, Lord. Help us to grow deeper in our relationship with you, to move closer to each other and to go further in this world. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen.